obviously every student who studies uh, for this course does need a good background in science therefore those are the grades that they're going to need and mathematics is really important so seven in maths um, is is really essential it'll just get harder if you haven't got a seven in maths especially as you get into the second um, standard level and higher level are not particularly different in in difficulty obviously the higher level has a few of the harder topics but they're not particularly diff uh, they're not particularly different in difficulty but if you look at the hours there's 95 hours for standard level and there's 60 extra hours on top of that for higher level and obviously there's more on the options as well more hours for the higher level students so there's a lot to get through in the two-year course and that that's one issue when it comes to higher level because you've got to move quite rapidly um, the topics are very similar to GCSE topics um, for instance you would have done mechanics if you did GCSE physics you would have done some waves you would have done something about electricity you would have done something about magnetism and all of the topics build upon each other and so the waves in standard level builds up to uh, well include some of the waves in higher level but higher level tends to put a lot more maths into that wave phenomena topic so yeah that's the basic split between them measurement and uncertainties really goes through both of them it goes through standard level and higher level um, practical work is really important uh, mainly because there's a 20% of the total mark goes on a practical investigation and every student has to do it 10 lesson hours to do it and then the rest of it is right up at home um, it's tough it's tough to get a really good score on it and you need the background of practical work so this is a group four sciences it's a practical subject and so there's a lot of practical work to be done the same scheme of assessment is used in all of the group four subjects so there's a 40 multiple choice or 30 multiple choice uh, paper for paper one paper two is short answer um, and paper three is a practical plus the option and if you look at the weightings of them you'll see it's very very similar 20 36 and 24 for the higher level 20 40 and 20 for the standard level and 20 percent on the practical work the investigation so most of it is an end exam after two years so that's tough it's quite hard to do a final paper well three final papers after two years of studying so it is a lot of pressure there okay we um, test students throughout the course to see that they're coping with the work so there are topic tests that go on there's um, mock exams pre-mock exams end of year 12 mock exams further mock exams they're all from past paper questions so from the very start every student will be getting used to the way the ib asks the questions and their style of questions Well, obviously, what you did in GCSE Physics and GCSE Maths becomes more useful in IB Physics and everything builds upon itself. So it doesn't start from scratch. It starts from a basis or a, a foundational point where you're expected to know certain things before you come in and start the course. Um, I suppose the biggest difference from all of that is it becomes more mathematical and so when a question says show that it means use some maths get some numbers or get some formula out of the information given so that you can show that something is true or false or doesn't happen or does happen that can be quite difficult so there are more skills especially in the kind of problem solving critical thinking kind of skills that come into it 
Obviously, we use a number of different approaches when we come to teaching. Um, I'm very interested in the problem solving part because that's a massive part of the physics. Um, given an unfamiliar situation, every student must be able to look at it, apply the laws of physics and come up with some answers. And that's a, a really, really important skill. Okay, IV physics is a numerate yeah. discipline, so it's very useful. You could go into a vast range of fields if you're numerate. And so it, it does prove that you're numerate if you get a good grade in IB physics. So it does open a lot of doors, not just science, but in other areas. Um, in terms of the IB and university, it makes students work independently and it makes them work well. So for instance, students I've taught before who've got 45 points haven't been the best at every single subject, but they've definitely been the most organized people you're ever likely to meet because they do everything they're asked to do and they have enough time left over to actually uh, breathe as well, which is quite useful. So if you're really organized, the IB is definitely something that you will enjoy because you'll have to be organized to cope with the quantity of work and the deadlines that you set. We all know that education is a partnership between parents, students and the school. So all we can do really is ask you to just keep an eye on your son or daughter and make sure they're coping with what's being asked of them and also just support them in any way that you normally would be doing, just as you did through GCSE. And uh, the, hopefully the school home contact will be regular and useful.